who went to bed and woke up to 200 Bitcoin. Yeah. And I used my credit card and I bought 100 Bitcoins for $20. Yeah. Early days of crypto, it was the wild west. From there, there was no clawing back from that rabbit hole. We're down here in Miami at Mining Disrupt, and this is the Coin Dad, aka Tobias, or Tobias, aka the Coin Dad, whichever you want to think of. I'm here with Mark Fresco. Where are you from, Mark? Uh, I'm from Connecticut. I said that wrong? Fraso. Fraso. That's why he gave Fraso. me that crazy look. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I suck with last names, <laughs> as you can tell. So, I'm here with Mike. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm here with Mark Fra Frazier. <laughs> I'm here with, you say your own name. Mark Frazier. <laughs> so he's, he's an OG from back in the summer 2011. And he was still, he, he was mining like, you know, the stages, CPU, GPU, FPGA, and ASICs. He was in the first, he's in the first class. He, he's OG of OGs. Mining in the CPU era. So, you remember what you were mining with back then? What type of laptop? Yeah, I'll never forget it. Um, I was in high school, and you know, I was the nerdy kid in the robotics team. You know, saw Bitcoin, crypto. This is cool. How do I get it? Um, there were no exchanges really back then. Um, I had a uh, nice Dell XPS M1530. I know that by heart because you know I put in like six or seven warranty requests on it for. Uh, frying the processor and the <laughs> graphics card later on from mining Bitcoin, you know, that's all that thing did. Did, did you write it in the comment section during the warranty process? No. <laughs> hey, back then, even if I did, they probably wouldn't know what it was. And, and it was actually funny because the same repair guy came out once, or, or on two different visits, and he's like, what, what the hell are you doing? I'm just like, oh, I'm just playing video games. He's like, I don't see anybody else having this problem. And I'm like, well, I'm a big gamer. All it did is it mined crypto, did homework, Mine more crypto, or mine Bitcoin. I mean, I mean, it's Bitcoin, I don't do the other coins. Yes. <laughs> Good correction right there. That's why this is called the Bitcoin Mining Bitcoin Museum. Bitcoin shit coin. Yes, exactly. Um, okay, so you have any, the purpose of this video really is to kind of uh, collect OG's uh, experiences from the early days. From now that we're here 10 years later, what sticks out in your head as like, the craziest thing and the thing you hated the most about that era and the thing that you loved the most. So, one thing I, I just bring this one up because like it's never talked about, but you, you might have heard people talk about a 51% attack when a pool gets 51% of the network cash, something's bad gonna happen. That was a real danger yeah, back then. Back then there was a pool, it's what I, everyone minds to, it was called DeepBit. It had over 51% of the network. No, they didn't, you know, do an attack. They just, you know, they exit scams, but like, it's, that's a whole other story, but like <laughs> quite a few of those. <laughs> it's early days of crypto. It was the wild west. There's, you know, oh, they mean like the hardships early on. You know, there, there was Mount Gox, and we all know what happened with Mount Gox, and there was right. Trade Hill. But you know, before that, you know, there was the let's go find a guy in Craigslist who will buy my Bitcoin and meet me in a parking lot, or, or you meet at a police station. That's what I did. But you know, meet, meet him wherever. You really did that? Yeah. Well, there was no. There was. I was so cops so, didn't even so, know what you were doing. So. so <laughs> Probably not, but like for context, right? Um, like I said, uh, I was in, in uh, 11th grade. Uh, yeah, 11th grade, I was a junior in high school uh, and senior in high school. You can't open a PayPal account unless you're 18 or older. That's I, mean, I had them, they got banned and the accounts got frozen. And like, mom, can you go talk to the PayPal people? Um, and before Bitcoin, you had this thing called Liberty Reserve. It was a e-currency that was unregulated and so on and so forth. It got shut down by the feds for money laundering, but it was like essentially, well, it wasn't cryptocurrency, but as a kid, they wanted to buy stuff on the internet from friends and whatnot, you could use that. And I saw this whole Bitcoin thing came out. I'm like, oh, I could be my own bank. They, they can't freeze my PayPal again. And I gotta use another fake name. I could just be this anonymous wallet. And- uh, That's what triggered you and got you in? Oh yeah. And then, and then you know, as I'm mining it and the price is appreciating, um, 
I mean, I, I, I've never been one to time the market. I could tell you about the 16 cent bubble. I could tell you about the $5 bubble. I could tell you about the $30 bubble. And I could tell you I sold on the $5 bubble and I sold at the $30 bubble. Ouch. And, uh, hey, thousand bucks back then when you're like a teenager, a thousand bucks. You know, That's that, true. That was pretty good. I was balling out. Uh, you know. Humanly, actually, it's difficult. You know, yeah. if you start from 10 cents, you get up to $10. I was you making, don't really like, think it's going to go to 100 or 1,000 or 10,000. And you want to live, you want to yeah. go enjoy life and so, do things, so people sell. Yeah. For all I knew, the government was going to shut this thing down too. I mean, I, I read the white, I didn't really understand that it's so decentralized, right. that ain't going to happen. Um, but yeah, you know, make a minimum wage. Like, oh, I just have a thousand bucks, let's cash that out. Um, and then, you know, kept, kept staying in mining, GPU mining, and then, or, or of, you know, there, there was no ASICs at this time period. Um, this, this pre actually, when did you know this? When did the Butterfly Lab, when did that come out? Butterfly Labs opened their mouth about it in 2012. Yeah, but that didn't hit the market. It didn't actually but then, deliver. then it was Fried Cat with the blades that made the, the blades, the 10 GH blades, and then it was Avalon 1 that came out first to market in January 2013. So that's technically the first ASIC that came out to market, it was January 2013. Okay, so this, yeah, this all predates, I but, mean, this but is- But Butterfly Labs was about that same era, a little bit, a but, few months after that. But this was, you know, you're, you're mining in, in, in mega hashes. Not did you get any Butterfly Labs when you ordered? No. Um, or did you do any pre-orders? I, I, I didn't order them. I didn't okay. order them. I, well, I, I thought it was vaporware. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? I was like, people are making coins for this digital. Because not for not, there really wasn't big use cases. There, there wasn't anywhere I could buy or there wasn't a lot you could do with it. Which is, you know, like, if you think about it, what could you spend your Bitcoin on? I mean, those were very early days. That's and one of the reasons why we're having this conversation like, now. The is fact that some of these machines were made, and there wasn't really a, much of a use case. It's kind of amazing. That's why I didn't think Butterfly Labs was real. I was like, oh, it's just a, like, a, like an exit scam. But, you know, it, it was real. It was a little late. Um, yeah, I mean, because even just, just going back, you know, you have CPU to, to GPU and then uh, FPGAs, you know. The you did that stuff. too? Uh, I had a, ooh, it was a Spartan. I, I had something. It was real technological, it was real nerdy, and I needed a lot of help in Bitcoin talk to figure out how to make it work. And I think that mine instead of mega hashes, giga hashes. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't think terra hashes were a thing until like. 2014 like, with, like, the, like, with, the, yeah. with the S2. S2 was first one terra hash and, miner. And like I was, and you know, FPGA, I'm like, you know, field programmable gate array. You know, I'm a, like fresh out of high school. Like what the hell is this thing? It's a lot of money, I, I, I can make some more Bitcoin. So that, that's what I did. Um, did that for a little while, sold that, because I realized, you know, the ASICs, when, when, once those yeah. come to market, the FPGA, everything else doesn't count. ASICs, you know, are the king. Exactly. It, it's, GPU was still alive, but more on the Ethereum side of yeah. the house, not I mean, really Bitcoin. I mean, uh, FPGA, you could use it for all those shit coins, but, you know, I'm a maxi, so. I am too. Well, I actually grew into one, because I did Same. mess. I think everybody had their well, share. Their, their experience of dealing with altcoins and getting burned. I'll say, you know, my, my Litecoin miner was good. I just sold the Litecoin to, to, to get Bitcoin. Uh, that, that was that was like, oh, this is really profitable. Let's just get more Bitcoin. It worked out well. Did you keep your Doge off of that? Oh, so, so, <laughs> so, 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 great. So <laughs> I, I forgot about this for the longest time. And then I signed into my Valley BTC account. I forgot how many I had. And I was like, I got like 20,000. Like converted because it was when Musk is like pump, bumping it. Yeah. I had like 20 grand in like in US like fiat of, of Litecoin. I was like, sweet. And I bought what did I buy? I bought a. Uh, what did I buy? Is that what I bought? I think I bought a car. Yeah. Yeah. Cryptos buy cars. Not a Lambo. Not yet. Not yet. No, I don't. I'm not even interested in Lambos. Yeah. Land, land, and home. Mostly land outside of Bitcoin for me, because you cannot make more land just can you just like you cannot make more Bitcoin. It's a Lambo. <laughs> a, a Lambo is land <laughs> on Actually, wheels that you still got to maintain. A, a, a Lambo is basically a house when it comes down to well, it. Well, it, yeah, price-wise, yes. I mean, when I bought my house, I mean, that, that's literally was Bitcoin. But I can't stand up and take a shower in it and enjoy mm. myself. I got into a Lambo in Dubai, and I hit my head on the way in and on the way out. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm done with it. That's why I got a big body Suburban. But, but thinking back though, like, like Bitcoin, when the first time I was ever to actually, this is gonna sound really sad, because I, I did this a couple of years ago. There was this website, um, it was called GIFT or GIFT, just GIFT with a Y. And you go to this website and you go buy gift cards with Bitcoin. And I was like, I sweet. Remember. And yeah. I was like, I wanna go party with my friends in California. Goes first class ticket, send my, send my Bitcoin, buy, buy a gift card using American Airlines. 
or go to Chili. I, I had Chili's, Chili's and Buffalo Wild Wing gift cards for dinner. I had an app on my phone. They had an app, and I just be all, there all the time. Mining, converting, gift cards, gift cards. Yeah, it was, it was, it was my parents' electricity the build one time wasn't too good, but you know, for the most part, it, it was a good time. And um, to, a couple years back, I signed into my account, and I'm just like, how many bitcoins did I send? And it, it was like four, four, five hundred bitcoin. Doesn't that make you sick to your stomach now? What's that? What's by, that worth right by, now? By, by, by the way, my memory with Mark is <laughs> 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 I've never in my life tasted Japanese Wagyu uh, steak or whatever. Is that what? Did I say that right? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not a meat like knowledgeable person. I'm not even a steak guy, by the way. Yeah. And, That's and, how good and, it is. and then we had what was it like? $120 uh, shots of Louis the Thirteenth. Yeah. And like the aroma hit the air just from taking the That's bottle the, cap off. I was actually showing that photo of us uh, earlier today. To oh, yeah? yeah? I was like, ah. Yeah, well, I was, was trying, to, I was trying to get reservations. They're booked out. And I was like, I had to take Tobias back, but I couldn't do it. No, yeah, that was that was some good times. I appreciate it. That was a great that, memory. That was a great time, yeah. Yes, thank you. Where were we? Uh, Jeff, but, yeah. Uh, actually, first um, A6 was the S9s. That's okay. actually where like my whole That was me. My, my two. I mean. A, S9 is what I started with. W did you, how early on did you get them? Did you get them? Uh, 2017. Did you, did you it was catch it, it was my cut it was my cousin uh, Tim that sent me one in the mail and started teaching me about it that was my first time mining was with s9 see I, I I was like watching like Bitcoin buying hardware and, and running it for the longest time like all these people who like you know because back in the day 500 kilowatt farms a big farm uh, you know we're talking yeah. so sevens and whatnot I'm like you know what let me order some so I ordered what did I order I ordered like 30 s9s and like 20 l3s and like this is a gamble but we're gonna do it and you know the nice thing about buying Whoa. miners back in the day, you buy them and you don't get them for like six, seven months. Like it was like the backlog back in the day. Yeah. Um, and I think at the time they were what, fifteen hundred dollars each. They're, they're, you know, and they skyrocketed. They went up. The moment on here, this is a great part to of the me, story. To me, to me, S nines are the most legendary, legendary miners mi of far. all the miners out by there. Far. Because how many times did you ROI off of that one miner over the years? <laughs> well, here, <laughs> put, it this way, put it this way. When when my miners first came. Um, the math was between the mixture of, they came in batches of groups at the time, between the L3s and the S9s combined, they were doing an average between 500 and 1,000 bucks a day, depending on the miner. The L3s were doing really good, but they, they tanked. But like, it was like 500 bucks a day, perfect timing. Um, so I had a whole bunch of these in my basement, and it's my parents' basement. You know, There's a one foot by one foot window that only slides open you know, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit on two sides. And I'm like, I, I can make this work in my mind, because I'm just you know a degenerate. So I'm like, OK. I need an electrician. Yeah, I don't realize, like, I've never contracted an electrician. Oh, we'll come out next week. Well, found out the neighbor's cousin who lives, like, the house behind me is an electrician. Call this guy up in the middle of the night. I'm like, hey, I need you come out here. He's like, is it an emergency? I'm like, yes, it's an emergency. What do you need? I'm like, I need 530 amp breakers and salts. <laughs> he's like, what the hell? And he's like, yeah, man, uh, I'll help you, help you later on the week. I'm like, I'm laughing I'll give you I'm laughing because I got a text an hour ago from my electrician at home right now installing them tomorrow and I'm getting <laughs> a 200 amp panel with 30 amp breakers in it as well. It's the same thing you're talking about. Yeah, so I, I, was, like, I was like, I'll give you an extra like $100, whatever. I, I don't know what I, what I offered the guy. If you come and do one right now, shows up nine o'clock at night, sitting there, installs the TZT. He's like, I got one NEMA 30, put the 30 twist lock. I got all those fired up because you know, they're, they didn't draw that much power back in yeah. the day. Um, you know, and then the next few days, next thing you know, there's now a new sub panel. My dad's telling me, Mark, why, the, why do we have this ugly freaking panel on my, you know, he's, he's a phone man. So everything looks beautiful on this board where everything's mounted. Now there's this bass, massive sub panel and you know, I got all my mining equipment. Professional Jimmy rig. Yeah. <laughs> and it's now it turned into, well, there is a 180 amps of Bitcoin miners in my parents' basement with a 200 amp uh, service. Till this day right now? Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> so now, now, we're, now we're a winner. We're winner 17, price is still freaking skyrocketing. Um, the, the the thought process behind it was, okay, let's put two gable attic fans in to suck in and out, blow uh -huh. out air. That didn't really work that well. I tried a whole bunch of things, um, but it was nice uh, in the middle Almost of winter. Almost burning their house down. Oh, oh, oh we'll get to that. Um, it's snowing in Connecticut. One side of the house, grass is green, grass is growing. It's beautiful because it's you know, pumping out hot air and everything else is covered in snow. Um, I put a thermometer in the basement. My dad, my dad said, you're going to catch the house on fire. I'm like, no. Ambient temperature is 125 degrees. I'd go down there in my towel to dry off. My mom, I thought she was going to kill me because all the hardwood floors were shrinking because all the moisture was coming out of it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and um, you're, you're 9, contracting 000, the house in yeah, and out. And Connecticut is also um, probably the worst state to mine in. You can get six cent power, but your transmission fee is like 11, 12 cents. Your demand fee is- You got you, riders it, it's and like, taxes so 30 and something that, cents yeah. when you're said and done. That's so, insane. Like nine, nine. I thought California was worse because the guy told me he's mining at 17 cents. Huh. I, I, so off those 180 amps, I, I spent over like $9,000. So I did what anybody would do. You know, I called the power company. I was like, there's something wrong with the meter. There's no way we spent $9,000. I'm trying to see what I mean, My dumbass forgot to turn off the miners. The guy comes over there, he's like, oh yeah, that, that's working. And you could just watch the disc spinning. Yeah. <laughs> good old days. And then, you know, I, uh, I found a hosting farm. And, and, and that was actually you know, good, good old days of Bitcoin mining. You know, finding a reliable, trusted hosting partner wasn't easy 2017. You had what, all these guys that you know, went under and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I found this guy, uh, uh, it was Value Hash. Uh, it was um, this, found this website. This guy made one post on Bitcoin Talk. Seems legit. Messes this guy up. I'm like, hey, can I get, like, before I send you all my, my, my miners, can you like show me that it's like legit? I, I still have the photo somewhere. I got a picture of like a, it was an old medical building that cleared out. Yeah. And it was just a big building, open, open everything with a shelf with like one S9 sitting on the shelf. And I'm like, oh, it looks legit. Sent them all my miners. I'm like, oh, you, you know. And to this day, I still use this guy. I don't really self mine too too much like that anymore. Um, and yeah, isn't that just, funny how there was just this weird trust back in the day? You had no choice. Yeah, but you had yeah. And, and a one lot of the of, other OGs earlier today said that you a know, lot of people sent, got burned. He sent somebody five thousand dollars, and he had he was just crossing his fingers that something comes back. Yeah, I mean, I mean. Uh, what was it? What was that? Gigawatt, megawatt, uh, gigawatt in Washington State. And then there were so many players yeah. that tried. Tr and, and, and what's what's actually funny now is if you go back and look at the builds and how they were trying to do stuff, like using air conditioners to pump uh, in air. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's an expense. Wasting money. Wasting money. Yeah. And uh, man, man, it's it's changed. I mean, now you know, you go look at a farm. We all kind of don't say they all look the same, but they, they're, they're, there's a system that we've all learned works. And uh, back then, you know, there's a lot of just trial and error. Now, now you're doing stuff with software, I think, right? With yeah. So actually, I guess we we will get into that. So the well, S9 error. I'm, I'm, well, I'm, what I was gonna get to is with what you know from all these years up until now. Do you see the nanometer plateauing at all? I hear that. Well, three nanometers coming out. With yes. What's minor right now? And so. Yeah, actually, I saw, I saw that eventually, report, eventually, even immersion cooling can't handle the capacity of the heat anymore. Well, I mean, so that's the thing. As when you keep, get to a certain as space. As you keep shrinking, you're still pushing the power through it. You're, you're still, right. Your heat output is right. still going. I mean, Intel's, um, they announced uh, earlier this year their A18 node, so it's a 1.8 nanometer node. Uh, low production volume start. Who? Intel? In Intel. Intel. I thought Intel was out. We're talking just, just silicon, so just they, they can oh. make this. So I mean, it doesn't mean they, so they can't make the chip for uh, Bitmain or somebody. Okay. But they have a two nanometer and a 1.8, and the 1.8 uh, low production uh, starts in 2024, and by 2025, basically, it takes them one or two years to figure out how to make the chips and not have half the chips be crap. Um, in 2025, 1.8 nanometers, so that's pretty crazy. And, and then on and top of that- And that's like peak bull market time frame. That, exactly, and, and the other cool thing, I don't, I don't know if it's worth discussing, but you know, when these chip manufacturers make these chips, so like Intel, by the companies that make the foundry equipment, when they, hey, here's 1.8 nanometer, they can't just press print and it makes a perfect chip. They learn yeah. how to make them better. Right. When the chip's not perfect, it might still work. It just might draw too much power, but for a Bitcoin miner, yeah, make my chip, make it better, and over time, get your, your foundry better and, and, and uh, increase the, the yields. But I'll take all those crappy chips and I'll throw them in the machine and run with them. Yeah. Why not? You, know, you can't do that with your you know, mobile phone processors and whatnot. You don't want somebody to have an iPhone and be like... So the mining space is a per perfect scapegoat. For, for, for microprocessor, oh, 100%, yeah. 100%. Um, yeah, I, eventually, I just see, you know, we're getting to a plateau when it comes to the size of the nanometer shrinking. Yeah, I, I'm There's really curious so what's going to happen. You can do. I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't. I didn't do too well in science, but I don't know what's smaller than a nanometer. <laughs> but it sounds pretty small. But I don't know, micro nanometer. <laughs> I but, don't know. But yeah, I, I, it's. I'm curious where we're gonna be. If we have the same conversation five years from now, and look back at this interview, I'm really curious what we're gonna be saying about. You know, the S19, the 17 exactly. compared to, you know. What am I going to have sitting in my museum gonna, in five are we, years? Are we going to have a petahash miner? 
in the next five years? Hey. I, we're doing, someone's pushing 250, I mean, five when, years? When we were at Giga Hash, I don't think anybody would ever thought we'd get to 100 terahash on a miner. We got somebody over there claiming that they can do 170 terahash on an air-cooled miner now. That's, Did that's you know weird. that? No. Who? Right there. These guys. Yeah, who, I've never I'm not going to say their name on the camera. It could be I, They haven't paid me it, to it, promote. It could be 2012 again. <laughs> Take the money and run. Okay. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to stop by the Bitcoin Mining Museum and tell us about your past, man. Yeah, I'll deliver you that gift tomorrow, too. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you for... You're, you're donating what? I should know the name of it. It, it was a it was a uh, a, uh, a miner that was never pushed to put the market. I, I mean, so I would I'm say really, that's pretty rare. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even supposed to have it. Oh. Okay, all right. You're gonna have it. Okay, don't say don't tell the all the all. Fell off the track. Appreciate you coming <laughs> by, Mark. Thank you. Okay, man. buddy. Thank you.